you enjoy your stay here. But I want you to remember the Brewsters are a strange lot. There are some very odd things that happen in this home. So please enjoy yourself and laugh when you feel the need. But if you need to converse with your other guests, please step into the lobby to do so. Also, the Brewster sisters do not like this new electricity thing. So if you have any of those electronic devices, please turn those off at this time because they're not real fond of them. Now, as guests in the home, please remember that there are panel rooms available. They are out of the foyer area.
find your nephew Mortimer, himself to be quite a worthy gentleman, but I've watched the growing intimacy between him and my daughter with some trepidation. For one reason, Miss Abby. Oh, you mean his stomach, Dr. Harper. His stomach? But his dyspepsia. He's bothered with it so, poor boy. No, Miss Abby, I'll be frank. I'm speaking of your nephew's unfortunate connection with the theater. The theater? Oh, no, Dr. Harper. Mortimer writes for a New York newspaper. I know, Miss Abby, I know, but a dramatic critic is constantly exposed to the theater, and I don't doubt but what some of them do develop an interest in it. Well, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. Why, Mortimer hates the theater. Really? Yes. He writes awful things about the theater. But you can't play with the poor boy. He was so happy writing about real estate, which he really knows something about. And then they just went and made him take this terrible night position. My, my. Yes. That is, Mortimer <coughs> says the theater can't last much longer. And in the meantime, it is a living. Yes, I think if we give the theater another year or two, perhaps. <gasps> Who do you suppose that is? Oh, no, thank you, Teddy. I'll get it. Come in, Mrs. Brophy. Hello, Miss Abby. Hello, Mr. Klein. What news have you brought? Colonel, we have nothing to report. Excellent, thank you. Abby. You know Dr. Harper? Sure. Hello, Dr. Harper. We've come for the toys for the Christmas time. Oh, yes. That's a wonderful work you do, fixing up discarded toys to give poor children a happier Christmas. Well, it gives us something to do when we have to sit around the station. You get tired playing cards. <laughs> then you start cleaning your gun, and the first thing you know, you've shot yourself in the foot. <laughs> Made it just as 
morning. We, I just took some over to Amanda, broke ever so many bones. Oh, you're back, Martha. How is Mr. Bianchi? Well, dear, it's pretty serious, I'm afraid. The doctor was there. I thought I'd have to amputate in the morning. Oh? Can we be present? No. The doctor says that we get some rose to the Well, you could be of no service, and you must spare yourself something. Here's the problem, Mrs. Crowley. Be sure to serve it good and hot. I will, ma'am. Thank you so much. Oh, this is fine. It'll make a lot of kids happy. I don't want the boys to just nuts about soldiers. That's General Mott. I've retired. <laughs> What's this? The Oregon. Teddy, you put that back. But the Oregon goes to Australia. Now, Teddy. No, Aunt Abby, I've given my word to fighting Bob Evans. <laughs> Teddy. What's the difference what can get it? Bobby Evans, Izzy Cohen, we'll run along now. Thank you very much. Oh, not at all. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, I must be getting home. Oh, before you leave, Dr. Harper. Charge! Charge the blockhouse! <laughs> the blockhouse? Stairs are always San Juan Hill. Have you ever tried to persuade him he wasn't Teddy Roosevelt? Oh, no. So happy being Teddy Roosevelt. Well, once. A long time ago, well, you remember, Martha? We thought if he'd be George Washington, it might be a change for him. But he stayed under his bed for days and just wouldn't be anybody. And we'd so much rather he'd be Teddy Roosevelt than nobody. Well, if he's happy, what's more important, you're happy, you'll be sure that he signs these. What are they? Dr. Harper has made all the arrangements for Teddy to go to Happy Dell Sanitarium mm -hmm. after we passed on. But should, should he be signing these papers so soon? Oh, yes, it's best to have it all settled. The Lord should take you away somewhere. Perhaps we couldn't convince Teddy to, commit, to commit himself. That would cause an unpleasant legal procedure. Mr. Witherspoon understands they're to be filed away until the time comes to use them. Mr. Witherspoon, who's he? He's the superintendent of Happydale. And Dr. Harlow has arranged for him to stop by tomorrow or the next day to meet Teddy. Well, I better be running along or Elaine's going to be over here looking for me. I'll give our love to Elaine. Oh, and Dr. Harper, oh, please don't think too harshly of Mortimer because he's a dramatic crane. Somebody has to do those things. Daddy, <laughs> um, <coughs> did you have tea? Is it ready to wait? Yes, dear. And dinner's going to be late, too. So, what? Teddy, oh, Teddy, Teddy, good news for you. You're going to ban him off and dig another lock for the canal. Delighted. That's bully, just bully. I shall prepare for the journey at once.
breakfast. Uh, suppose we wait until after the show. That'll make it pretty late, won't it? Not with that little stinker that we're seeing tonight. From what I've heard about it, we'll be at Blake's by 10 o'clock. You ought to be fair to these plays. Are these plays fair to me? I've never seen you walk out on a musical. That musical is an opening. They liked it in New Haven, but it needs a lot of work. Oh, I was hoping it was a musical. You have such a light mind. Not a bit. Musicals somehow have a humanizing effect on you. After a serious play, we joined the proletariat on the subway, and I listened to a lecture on drama. After a musical, you bring me home in a taxi and make a few passes. Now, Darla, that is a very inaccurate piece of reporting.
Wait a minute, Now I'm right. You get a hold of George. Very good. 